Hello dear students, in this video we are going to study the principles of genetics. Mainly we are going to focus on the uh, on inheritance and uh, the laws of Mendel. So, if you look at this family, this uh, gentleman get married to this lady, then what uh, they got are these children, if you look at them. This guy here has the nose of the father, this also, this girl has the nose of the father the color the skin looks like the mother and this also the skin looks like the mother but if you look at this guy over here he looks like exactly has many features like his father so uh, why these feature features to pass from the parents to the of a spring and what we call this this is what we call inheritance or heredity heredity or inheritance is the transmission of the characteristics from the parents to the offspring and this is what what, what is meant by inheritance how one of the greatest scientists who first uh, came uh, to study this uh, phenomena scientifically and made his principles was Gregor Mendel. Mendel was concerned about studying inheritance and how these uh, characteristics pass from parents to the uh, offspring. So he studied pea plants. He took these pea plants and studied them. And you may ask why he did not study human to see inheritance. Well, it will take a long time. Imagine he is studying this boy to see his future. Then maybe he's going to wait 20 years until he grows up and gets married and have children of his own. Then there has a child. Will need, will need another 20 years at least to get married and have children of his own. Then he can start uh, following the features and how uh, they have inherited these characteristics. And humans do not have as much as these implants. Look how many uh, pea plants he can study. So he decided to study pea plants because they are seasonal. There are some features which made these pea plants good for his choice was seasonal they can grow three to four times a year so he can just take a seed plant it on the soil then it grows and he's going to have like in about a month he can start having seeds from this uh, plant then he can plant them again to give him another uh, tree in here Okay, then he can have these uh, more chances of having these characteristics. Also, the characteristics of uh, pea plants are like contrasting. So you have tall plants and you have short. You have uh, uh, round seeds and you have wrinkled seeds. You have uh, yellow seeds, you have green seeds, you have flowers which are pink and so you have many different features and uh, contrasting which you can see clearly and study them, okay. Another thing is the flower, the flowers of these pea plants are uh, bisexual by sexual what is meant by bisexual they contain both the male and the female so they contain like this one the flowers contain the anther and contains the style stigma ovary so they have the stamen the carpel they have the male and female reproductive organ so uh, it can be self-fertilized he can self-fertilize the flower to get pure strains pure or he can cross them with another flower and take uh, pollen from here and put it in a, another flower so he can cross fertilize them or self fertilize the same flower and this will give him like mix and pure characteristics and this is what he wanted so uh, uh, Mendel what did he do exactly with his pea plants he first for two years about two years he just uh, tried to make pure strains so what what do we mean by pure this is pure plant he, it means that he self fertilized the plant again and get, got seeds it grows and self fertilized it and got seeds and grows and self fertilizes it until all the offspring of this plant are tall none of them was short 
also this short plant he kept self fertilizing it got seed grow self fertilize it until all the offspring were short nothing was tall so now we call these pure strains or pure breeding so now this was the first step he made pure strains pure plants now the second step what did he do after that he cross fertilized the plant so he cross fertilized a tall plant with a short plant and what he he got was this one the offspring or the first filial generation all of them was 100 percent tall 100 percent tall and now this is surprising at the beginning because people used to think that uh, the features of the father and the mother will mix together maybe this uh, the features of this tall will mix with the features of the short one then maybe he is going to give uh, medium plants but no all the offspring were just tall plants and this was the first surprise for him the second one when he self fertilized this he took a plant from first filial generation this is from the first filial generation and he self fertilized it and what did he get now this is another surprise he got this amount tall plants like 75 percent tall plants and 25 percent 25 percent short now the ratio here is three to one three as much tall plants as this short plants and this was the first surprise and he just kept wondering why these happens like this he made another experiment with what with the these uh, he took pink flowers from pea plants and cross fertilize it with white flowers and what did he get the same he got 100 percent 100% in the first first filial generation all are pink and then he took one of this first filial generation and self fertilized it self pollinated it and what did he get this is from the first filial generation this is the patterns this is the first filial generation and he took one from the first filial generation and self pollinated it and he got this result the same like the first one he got this amount like 75% pink and 25% white the same ratio he got 3 to 1 now what is going on why these feature the white white color did not appear in the first filial generation also why the short plant the short feature did not appear in the first filial generation it just appeared in the second filial generation with the same ratio what is it it is three to one so what explains it mandel came to a conclusion and uh, he called it the uh, principle of dominance complete dominance so he did not get like mix uh, those did not mix the colors okay between them to get something which is uh, in between the color is not white white is not pink pink is like mixed between them he did not get this which means that what it means that some features are dominant this color is dominant over the white so the pink color is dominant and this white color he called it recessive recessive so the color or the feature which appears in the first filial generation he called it complete, uh, completely dominant so this feature is dominant dominant what is dominant is the feature which dominates over the other if it is present it does not allow the others to appear so here the color the pink color was dominant it did not allow that 
a white color to appear in the first failure generation. But in the second failure generation, he started to see this feature uh, present and he called it recessive. Recessive, which is a feature which doesn't uh, express itself in the presence of another feature. So this is the what, what, what we mean by dominant and recessive. And so let's go back to Mendel and what he did and what he concluded. By these experiments, uh, like tall plant, short plant, uh, pink flower, white flower, and the uh, generations, uh, the office prank he got, he came to his uh, first law, the law of segregation. Segregation means to separate. So what what separates here? The his first law of segregation states what? It says the characteristics of an organism are determined by internal factors. So he came to a conclusion that there are something in these internal factors. He called them alleles. These alleles occur in pairs. Now this plant has this allele, for example here. This uh, in the chromosomes, it became more clearly when we studied uh, chromosomes and we discovered them. So if we see here, this characteristic, for example, tall is present in these chromosomes. They exist in pairs. So in the cell of this plant, they exist like in pair in two chromosomes. Okay, in the same um, in the same chromosome, but in two uh, pairs. So now he says they exist in pairs, but in the formation of gametes, they separate. So this feature, the allele, will separate in one cell and this one will separate in another cell. And this uh, proved to be true in the, when we just went deeply in the science of genetic. And this is from the father and from the mother, also the same. You have the same feature here and here. It will separate in two gametes here. Here. Now, if this meets this one, you're going to have something. If this meets this one, is going to have another thing and this. So Mendel, look here. Mendel just said um, he, he studied these and referred to these alleles using what? Letters. For example, to be tall, this plant is tall because it has two alleles. Let's refer to them to tall, capital T capital T. This plant is short because it has two alleles. It is small t, small t. Now what? They will separate to form the gamete. So here you have capital T, capital T. This is small t, small t. Now what? If this joins with this one, you will have capital T, small t. A plant with capital T, small t, with these two alleles, it has one dominant, which is the tall. It has one recessive, which is the short. But uh, if you have another one like this, capital T with small t, you'll get the same capital T, small t. So this is what Mendel concluded. So before we go to Pond Square and how to do this uh, in in this Pond Square, let's have some terminologies which are important to understand here. Phenotype. Phenotype is the feature or the characteristics which appear in the organism. So this is tall. It's a uh, phenotype is tall. Maybe someone has like, um, let's say, blue eyes. So blue eyes, what is his uh, phenotype is blue, but the internal component which made this or made, which made this one tall is different. This is, we call it genotype. Genotype can be present in two types here. We have homozygous and heterozygous. If we have the same, the same alleles or, or just if we have, for example, capital T, capital T, this is tall. This is the phenotype is tall, but the genotype is homozygous because we have the same. If you have recessive short plant, it is small t, small t, but it is homozygous. It is not dominant. It is recessive. It is short, but its uh, genotype is what? It is homozygous. These we call them pure. Now, if we cross this one, with this one, we will get capital T, small t. Now this also, the phenotype is tall, but its genotype is 
a heterozygous it is heterozygous this we call it mixed not pure and this is what we mean by pure and mix now here if you go to ponds square it is a way of uh, representing these possibilities of having the office spring for example if you have this one here uh, if you have tall pure tall capital t capital t and the uh, short plant small t small t now we're going to use the same letters if you use the capital t for tall for short you're not going to use s you are going to use small t if you use capital y for yellow for green we're not going to use g we're going to use small y and so on this is how we do it so here for the Tall plant, we're going to use capital T, capital T, this is the genotype. And for the short plant, it's going to be small t, small t. Now, the law of segregation, this will separate to form the gametes. So here, for this part, we're going to decide, we're going to put for the male. It's going to have this sign, the sign means the male. So here, I'm going to put capital T and here capital T and this is the female this side is going to be for the female is going to have this sign which means female so here we're going to put small t small t now here if we cross them what is going to happen what they are going to give us capital T uh, small t with capital T will give us capital T small t if you have capital and small put the capital before that small if it is for the same feature now this one with this one will give us the same capital t small t this one with this one will give us capital t small t this one with this one also capital t small t so this was in the first filial generation when we have pure strains so this one is 100 percent okay capital t small t so it is 100 percent it's uh, as a uh, genotype is heterozygous and its phenotype is tall 100 percent tall but it is heterozygous now if we self fertilize one of these plants and if we self fertilize it it's going to be for the male capital t small t for the female because we will self fertilize it it contains the same genes or the same areoles is going to be capital t small t now we're going to put these uh, in the pond square here for the male we're going to put them here capital t and here small t here capital t small t if we cross them we're going to get what capital t capital T this is the first one with the first one the first with the second is going to be capital T small t this one with this one is going to be capital T small t this one with this one small t small t now if we find the percentage of what we got in here is going to be 25 percent 25 percent uh, is what it is capital T capital T and this one and this one is like 50 percent capital T small t and this one 25 percent is what is small t small t now if we speak about the genotype we have tw uh, 25 percent capital T capital T the ratio is 1 to 2 to 1 so 1 2 2 to 1 1 homozygous tall two heterozygous tall one homozygous short now this if we speak about the genotype but the phenotype of them we know if you have only one allele and the other this is tall and this is small if this is present because it is dominant so it's going to express itself over this one so these together will be tall and only this one will be short so the ratio is is going to be three tall to one short and this is the ratio which we got in the second filial generation 
uh, either in the uh, when the flowers uh, were pink and uh, white also when they were tall the plants and short and this is what we came and this is how we use the pond square to do these uh, to find the phenotypes and genotypes and the percentage and the ratio of everyone in here so here we have something we call it test cross as we saw before the tall plant can be either capital T capital T homozygous or it can be heterozygous and that is going to be capital T small t so how can we know I have a tall plant it can be either this one or this one how can I know it's genotype I know the phenotype it is tall but how can I know or determine the uh, uh, genotype of it we are going to cross it with a short plant small t small t this uh, is genotype is clear we know it is recessive and homozygous uh, small t small t now we're going to have two possibilities either it can uh, we can cross this one with this one so this is the first what we will do cross these two and how is that going to be we're going to put a pond square and uh, we're going to do the same for the father this will separate the gametes okay to form the gametes capital T capital T for the short plant we have small t small t now if we cross them we'll get all of them capital T small t capital T small t so the outcome of this one is 100% 100% capital T small t all of them are going to be tall all the plants are going to be tall all of them tall so if we got 100% of the offspring tall it means the genotype of this tall plant is pure it is homozygous tall now here if we cross these two the, the next ones here the small one with this one which has uh, the this heterozygous what is going to happen here we're going to put the gametes capital T here for the father and small the father here and here is going to be the mother small t small t this with this one is going to give us capital T small t this one with this one small t small t this one with this one capital T small t this one with this one is going to give us capital T uh, small t small t now what is the ratio as you can see the ratio is 50 percent this is the percentage going to give us 50 percent tall and 50 percent short now if you got this ratio one to one if half of the plants the offspring were tall half of them tall and half of them short now the genotype of this plant is heterozygous is not homozygous and this is test cross we use it to determine the uh, genotype of a plant if we don't know is it homozygous or heterozygous is it pure or mixed and this is how we use it now here let's go back to our friend Mendel Mendel kept making his experiments uh, uh, with his pea plants now Mendel thought what if I take plants and study two features at a time for example here he has tall plant and the seeds of them are yellow so he has tall and yellow he has hair short plants and green short and green now if we study two features at a time was the offspring he got this offspring all the plants were tall all the plants were yellow so 100% tall and yellow and now this is not surprising anymore because what we already know that the tall feature is dominant over the short now we discovered that the yellow color yellow is dominant over the green so nothing is there but if he, he he takes a plant from first filial generation and self fertilize it 
Now we'll take a plant from the first filial generation and cell pollinate it. And what is going to give us? And this is what it gave us. It gave us this amount, tall and yellow, like the father. It gives us this amount, short and green, like the mother. But now, what is surprising is this. We got these features. We got tall, like the father. But they are, the seeds green like the mother. And here, we got short like the mother and yellow like the father. Now it just got interesting. What explains this? Okay, why these features? Why we did not get all the plants tall? Why? Before. Why we did not get all the plants tall and yellow and like let's say three and one the ratio one, why we did not get short and green, like what we had when we studied just one feature, why? Why we got now different variations, some tall like the father, green like the mother, short like the mother, green, uh, yellow like the father, why we came up with these uh, new combination and new, now this is what led Mendel to his second law, he called it the law of independent assortment, so Mendel's second law is the law of independent assortment. He says these features do not pass from one generation as a package. So I'll just explain it in this way. Okay. For example, this in the gene, this, let's say here, this is an allele, as Mendel called it, this allele here. Let's use this color, this allele. Okay. This the allele will codes for tall plant but it is not the same allele which will give you the same color yellow or green so the tall will be uh, different uh, alone it passes alone and green or yellow will passes alone in the chromosomes or in the genes to the next cell now here just to uh, break it down lost the pond square and here we have the uh, genotype of the tall plant and yellow this is tall and yellow and here on the other hand here we have the this let's call it the father and this is the mother and this is uh, the short and green as i told you we will use the same letter to represent the feature okay now here um just for simplicity we can take only one if you have the same for example you have capital T, capital T, and they are the same, you can take only one of them, and that is enough. From this, we'll take capital T, capital Y, and here we'll take small t, small y. This is the male, and this is the female. Now, uh, and the, if we cross them, these are pure. If we cross them, what they are going to give us, the capital T with the small t, and the capital Y was small Y. So this is the first filial generation and this explains why in the first filial generation all the plants were what? All of them were tall and yellow. Because if you cross two pure plants with two features, look what they will give us. Tall because this is dominant and yellow because this is dominant. So this explains why we got in the first filial generation this. But now if we still fertilize this one, we are going to look at the gametes. And this is according to the law of independent assortment. So this capital T can go with the capital Y to give us this gamete. And this capital T can also go with this small y to give us this gamete. Now this one, small t, can go with the capital Y to give us this gamete, small t, capital Y. It can also go this small t with the small y to give us this gamete. Now these are the possible gametes of the parents. These are the possible and they pass as you can see independently. The tall passed with the yellow, uh, the tall pass with the green, the short pass with the yellow, the short pass with the green to form the gametes, uh, like separately, independently, okay? And now what we're going to do, here, on this side, we're going to put the gametes of the male. They're going to be like this one. 
and in this side we're going to put the gametes of the female we'll put the same now these are the gametes of the male and because we are going to still fertilize the same plant with the same pollen of the plant or maybe another but the same generation which contains the same uh, genotype now we're going to have the same for the male gametes and the female they're going to be the same now here we're going to start crossing them this one with this one will give us capital T capital T capital Y capital Y so we put the features uh, which are similar together so the capital T will go with the capital T then we will put the capital Y with the capital Y or with the small Y it doesn't matter but this is how we do it now here the first one with the first will give us this one this one with the second will give us this one capital T capital T capital Y small Y this one with this one will give us these this one with the last one here will give us capital T small T capital Y small Y now the second here and this we're going to cross it with the first is going to give us now we finish the table just doing the same now if you see the uh, genotype of these plants these are the offspring the ones which we got if you look at them here we have homozygous tall homozygous yellow here homozygous tall and heterozygous yellow and here heterozygous tall but homozygous so if you count the uh, genotype you, you'll you'll see how we have m many different uh, varieties uh, you have them in the book in a table just study them but now we'll concern about the phenotype the features are they going to be tall or yellow short or green and now this the first one is tall and yellow tall and yellow this one so these all tall and yellows this one it is tall but it is not yellow it is green it doesn't have one capital Y it doesn't have one dominant it has these two recessive alleles so we'll not mark it we'll go to the second this one yeah it is tall and it is yellow it is heterozygous in both alleles but still it has these feature this one and this one and this one now these are the ones which show these characteristics these are the ones which got that tall and yellow now this one is what if you look at it it is tall but it is not yellow it is green this one is tall and green and this one tall and green uh, let's see the other ones here it is short this one short but it has this dominant so it is yellow this one short and yellow short and yellow and the last one in here is short and green now if you look at the percentage of these and how much we got we got nine tall and yellow we got three tall but green we got here uh, three uh, yellow but they are short three short but yellow and we got one here one as short and green so as you can see here the ratio of this tall if we take the features one by one one alone how many tall we have we have 9 to 3 so the ratio is still 3 to 1 but now if you can see here the uh, all together they pass independently and they give you different ratios the ratio was 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 so this explains uh, explains the law of Mendel the second law which is the law of um, independent assortment and uh, that was the first part uh, in this unit. Uh, until then, ciao.